Hello everyone and welcome to another X-Plane 11 tutorial. Today's flight will take us from Philadelphia to New York using the ZibbleMod 737-800 aircraft. We'll be departing runway 09 Lima and arriving at 04 Lima. We'll be doing an ILS approach using the frequency 110.90 with a course of 44. Our first waypoint will be Davies and then we'll proceed on to Lauren which will total approximately 84 nautical miles. My navigational data has been updated to 1908, so if you're interested in updating your air rack to the same, you can do so by going to navigraph.com. We'll be flying at a flight level of 110 or 11,000 feet, and we'll be in the air for approximately 26 minutes. Our total time from one to the other will be 54 minutes, and we'll be taking on approximately 4,900 kilograms of fuel. If this sounds like bingo or alphabet soup, don't worry. My job is to explain all of this to you. I'm only displaying this information so that you can record it down so that if you'd like to follow along later, you can do so. So let's go ahead, get in the cockpit, and let's get started. All right, the first thing you're going to notice is we have a master caution and a fuel warning here. So let's go over here to the tablet in the Zibble mod, select fuel weight and balance, and we'll select on the fuel and enter our 4.9 kilograms that I mentioned in the flight information screen. We'll now go over to the mode control panel and set our altitude to 11,000 feet and our runway heading 090. We'll now go up above our heads and set the cabin altitude to 11,000 feet so that this way it's pressurized to that as well. Activate our landing lights, our taxi lights, and we'll turn on our strobe and anti-collision lights as well. We can now go and activate the auto brake by coming into the middle of the aircraft and zooming in and setting it to the RTO position. This essentially helps us that if we have a failed takeoff that we have the ability to stop. And now we'll go to the flight management computer and start to set up our flight plan. We'll select FMC, position init, and then our reference airport is Philadelphia, KPHL. And we'll plug that into the reference airport and we'll go to route. We still have Philadelphia here in the scratch pad, so we can plug that into the origin. And we'll set up our destination for KJFK. And we'll be departing from runway 09 Lima, so we'll give that information as well. Now that that's all entered, we can move on to the perfinit screen and plug in our flight level. FL110 for 11,000 feet. We'll put a cost index of 20, reserves of zero, and the zero fuel weight and the ground weight are automatically calculated in the Zillow aircraft. Simply click on the left button here, and now we can execute that plan. We'll now move on to the N1 limits or our takeoff, and you'll see that it's asking for the temperature. We can simply click that button, or we can look over here and see that it's plus 14 degrees Celsius and enter that as slash 14 on the scratch pad and select the button. But again, Zibbo Mod does that for us automatically, so we simply click the button. Now we can go over to takeoff, set our flaps to 5, and we now are provided with a V1, a VR, and a V2 speed. So let's lock those three in and we need to note the VR or V rotate speed of 120. So we'll go in here to the MCP again and set our speed for takeoff to 120. That essentially lets us press the takeoff go around button or TOGA and I'll explain that in a second and have the aircraft automatically maintain 120 knots for us for airspeed. Back to the flight management computer we go. We'll select the route button. We'll select next page and we'll type in our DAVY S route and plug it in over here. 
We'll then move to our next route, L-A-U-R-N. And plug that in as our second route, and then go ahead and activate that particular part of the flight plan. And then we'll execute it. We'll now go over here to the departures and arrivals and just make sure our departure is on runway 09 left, which it is. So we'll go back to departures and arrivals again. And we'll look at the arrival over here. And we need to set in that we're going to be arriving at runway 04 left using an ILS approach. And we go ahead and execute that. The very last thing we have to do is just verify everything's okay. So we'll go over to the legs mode here and we see that there's this empty line here or discontinuity. We can fix that by selecting the waypoint below and then selecting the broken piece up here and hitting execute. And now we see that we have everything that's continuous here. We'll fly in the Davies, then we'll go to Lauren, our Roke, and then our airport essentially that we're going to be arriving to at KJFK very soon. So let's go ahead and set up things the way I like them to be set up. So I like to set it up in climb mode for the, uh, for the captain. And for the first officer, I like to put it in program mode so I can see where I'm going from and where I'm going to as, as well as how much fuel I'll have left. Coming back in, we can now remove the master caution for fuel. We can now set our flaps to 5, which I'll do now. And I'll zoom in so you guys can see that. And it takes a second or so for the flaps to come out. Perfect. Flaps are there. Well, we're almost ready to go. So let's go ahead to the MCP again and activate the auto throttle flight director and our first officer's flight director. There is a button on the throttle called TOGA and there it is right there. Take off, go around is what it's known for. So when we release the parking brake by clicking this button here and press the TOGA button, our aircraft will essentially go and take off. So let's just do one final look around the aircraft to make sure everything's okay. I see our landing lights and our taxi lights. Our flaps look to be deployed at five degrees. So I say we're good to go. So let's go ahead and activate the toga. There we go. I happen to have a button on my Eclipse yoke. You can press the button manually if you like. 80 knots. 80 knots. V1 rotate. Rotate. We've hit 120, so we'll pull back on the yoke. Positive rate. Positive rate. We can raise the landing gear. Four hundred. Four hundred. We'll go ahead and increase our flaps by one. One thousand. Thousand. Let's go ahead and raise our flaps all the way up. And now that we've hit a thousand feet, we can go to our mode control panel, activate vertical navigation, lateral navigation, and then command A. And that essentially puts it in autopilot mode. So if I look here at the screen, we're now on our way up to 11,000 feet. We have a speed of 247 knots, which is uh, below the 250 required under 10,000 feet. We can see that we're on our way to Davies at 13.9 nautical miles. And there's no terrain warnings or anything on our screen. So essentially, we're now in autopilot mode. If we look at the flight management computer here, we can see that we have less than 12 nautical miles to go between uh, before we reach our 11,000 feet. Uh, and then once we have reached that, we'll be at our top of climb and at our cruise mode. I can get to the cruise mode by clicking this cruise button here and I can see what cruise mode is all about. But it'll automatically switch to cruise mode for us once we reach our top of climb. So I'll just be quiet for a few minutes. We'll enjoy the scenery as we work towards 11,000 feet.
Okay, we're almost at our 10,000 feet, and then we have a 1,000 to go. Should hear the warning soon. 1,000 to go. There we go. So let's go ahead and turn off our landing lights, our taxi lights, and the rest can remain on. All right, great. Sounds like the flight crew just announced to our passengers that we're in cruise mode and that they can start to use their electronic devices. So let's have a look at where we are right now. So looking at the screen, we have 44, 45 nautical miles to go until we reach our first waypoint, Lauren. And we're at our 11,000 feet and our cruising speed of 292 um, knots. Our engines are taking a break. They're only at 66 right now percent. And we started out at 14 degrees and it's now plus eight. So it's gotten a little cooler up here at 11,000 feet. Let's look at our flight management computer. We can see a couple key pieces of information that we need to be aware of that our cruise mode here is going to a top of descent in about 16 nautical miles. So in 16 nautical miles, that means we're going to be starting our descent. And it's very critical for us to catch this number and make the change in altitude. If we fail to change our altitude before this top of descent, the aircraft will not automatically descend for us. So let's go ahead and do that now. We'll go up to the MCP and we'll set that down to zero for altitude. You're still going to want to keep your altitude up here set to 11,000 feet so that it can manage the um, cabin pressure automatically so there's no need to change that but you do need to make sure that your altitude here for your mode control panel or MCP is set to zero um, as long as you set that to zero once we hit this basically 11 nautical miles left the top of descent will be reached and we'll start our descent into um, KJFK or New York essentially Looking at the right-hand side of the screen on the first officer's flight management computer, uh, looks like we'll still have lots of fuel left by the time we reach our destination in New York. We'll still have approximately 3.8 kilograms of fuel, which is more than enough. So if we look over here, we should now see our top of descent on the screen, as well as a decel. In other words, we're going to start slowing down here just before our top of descent so that once we start our um, descent down and we gain speed, that we're not over speeding, essentially like that. And if that does become a problem, there is a tip. There's a speed brake here that you could leverage. And by pulling the speed brake out like so, if we look at the back part of the aircraft here, 
you can see these speed brakes have been deployed. So if you get to a descent piece and you find that for whatever reason the plane is still going too fast, you could activate the speed brakes here to try to slow down the aircraft a little bit. So let's just again enjoy the scenery as we reach the top of descent here. So I don't know if you could hear that from outside, but the engine started to decelerate. We are now going um, slower here. We're on our way up to 140 knots, as you can see here. And our altitude is descending. We're at 10,700 feet. So we're on our way down from 11,000 feet down to 2,000 feet, which is our minimum. And our speed's decreasing down to 240. So everything's looking good. We have 23 nautical miles away before we reach the Lauren Waypoint. And if you look here, we've went from climb mode, then we are at cruise mode, and now we're at the descend mode. So you can see we're, we're basically decreasing in altitude by about 1,300 feet per minute. That's what the vertical speed means. And you can see our speed here, 240. If by some chance you wanted it to be slower or faster, you can simply type in your number here into the scratch pad, click this button, and the aircraft will automatically adjust for you. Let's look at our first officer flight management computer here. We can see again we're on our way to Lauren, and then uh, we still have lots of fuel left, um, so that's great as well. You can also click the legs button and see the actual altitude that we're going to be at at each waypoint. So. Um, Everybody has their preference of what they would prefer. I really like the program mode on my first officer screen, so uh, it's up to you what you choose. So um, we still have a little bit of work to do or a little bit of time before we uh, start worrying about our approach, but we can still be proactive. So I mentioned in the flight information at the start of the video that we'll be flying into 040. So what's important here is that our course is adjusted into the ILS course approach, which was 44. So what we're going to do is set each course in the captain and in the first officer to 44. And we'll set our heading to 040, which is the actual magnetic heading of the runway. So I had a few questions from people. Why do we have to set the course to something different than the runway heading? The best I could research. So if you guys have the answer, I'd love to have the answer in the comments below. But the best answer I could come up with is that sometimes the um, different times of the year, even though the runway has been set to 040 at the time, that was the magnetic heading. Over a period of time, the magnetic heading changes of the runway. So setting the course to 44 in this case is the deviation um, that it used to be at essentially. So setting the course to 44, that's the actual um, heading that we need to be at in order to, in, in, to intercept the middle line of the runway. So again, that is my bad attempt at explaining that. I have searched many forms on the explain forms and I have not got a great answer. If you happen to know the real answer, I would love to have that in the comments so that I would know the answer for the future myself. So we have the course set to 44, we have the heading set to 40, we have the first officer's course set to 44. You might ask the question, well how did I even get that to begin with? Um, you could use approach charts, but again Zibomod has an AVI tab and we can select this tablet. We can select airport and I have it already on the screen, but for you, if you go here to airport, you can type in your airport, KJFK, select next, and it brings up all the information that we need to see. So we can see that we're flying into runway 04 left. 
The ILS frequency is 110.90 with a course of 44. So that's how we got the 44. The other thing we have to worry about is making sure that our nav radios have the ILS frequency set up. So if you don't have 110.90 in nav 1 and also in nav 2, then you would adjust the small knob to be 90, the big knob to be 110, and then you would select this little arrow here to switch between them. Same thing on the other side. Use the small knob clockwise to get to 90, the big knob clockwise to get to 110, and again, the, the double arrow to put move it from standby to active. So again, let's say pretend I change this to something weird and I hit that. Now that's the active ILS, but that's not what we want. We need 110.90, so I'll go and switch standby back into the active position as you can see. So we are all set to land. Let's have a look at the map and see where we're at. And we can see that we're a bit left of the runway. We're approaching the Lorne waypoint here. We're going to turn on to the Davies waypoint and then essentially we're going to be coming in here to our 04 left runway here. So we're almost there. There's one other thing I wanted to show you. You should always land into a headwind or always take off into a headwind. So you'll notice on the screen it's a little hard to see. It says 40 and at 7 knots. So I've set up a wind in X-Plane on 40 degrees to be 7 knots. It's actually 10, but I don't know why it shows a 7. So if you would like to also replicate this, you go up here to your flight configuration screen and then go to weather. And I have it here, so I'll just remove it so you can see. So you can go add a wind layer drag that wind layer down to the bottom and then set the direction that you want the wind to be in. So since we're landing at a runway that's 040, so we can put 040 for the direction of the wind and your desired speed, so I can put 10 or something like that. So again, if you are flying this, some people asked, how do you know which runway to fly into? Well, one, it would be the tower that tells you that or two, it would be whatever direction the wind is going. But if you're simming and you want to pick your desired runway rather than, um, you know, fly into the one that has the wind today, you can simply go to the wind, set the wind in the direction that you're flying into, and away you go. So we'll apply those changes. So let's go ahead and lower our flaps down to five. And we'll start getting ready for our landing here. So flaps are going down to five. And we'll adjust the auto brake now, this time from RTO, we'll set it to two. There's four speeds, there's one, two, three, four. The max is very rarely used um, in extremely short runways, but this is basically gonna activate the brakes for us. So once we touch down and the nose of the aircraft lands and the weight of the nose is on it, we're gonna have basically the hydraulics start to slow us down there. So again, you're gonna wanna set the auto brake to two. We're now at five degree flaps. We have a nice view. We can see our airspeed going down. We can see our altitudes around 3000. And we can see here at the bottom the diamond, and it's not a full solid diamond. This is our localizer. This is part of the ILS, and it helps us get the left and right of the runway. So essentially when this diamond is in the middle, we have lined up perfectly with the runway. And there's also a diamond here on the vertical plane, up and down, essentially. And when that diamond is here and solid, that means we have a three degree glide slope um, going down to the runway. So you can see here, we're approaching our Archoke waypoint. We'll make a left-hand turn and it will be approaching the runway, basically getting ready for our landing. So very soon we're gonna be activating our approach. So let's go ahead and lower our flaps down to 15 now. There we go. As we lower the approach, the engines have to work harder because we have more drag, so the engines will actually start to increase. And we'll go ahead and almost get ready to deploy the landing gear, so we'll just put them in the middle position right now. And once we start our turn, 
we will go ahead and activate the landing gear and get ready for our approach. So we got a few seconds, let's have a look at the scenery again. Alright, we started our turn, landing gear down, flaps the 30, let's go up, turn our landing lights on, turn our taxi lights on, and once we finish our turn, we should be approaching our localizer and glide slope. So localizer is your lateral or left and right and your uh, glide slope is your vertical or up and down. And we're gonna move over here away from vertical navigation and lateral navigation mode. And because we're doing an ILS landing, once we uh, line up here, we're gonna press the Vorlock. That will get us on the localizer, basically line us up with the center line of the runway. And then once we are ready, we'll press the approach button and then that will start taking us down for our descent to the runway. So if we look way off in the distance right around there, that's the runway. We can see the localizer now becoming solid down below. So that means we're now um, you know, lining up with the runway. So when this diamond comes into the middle, it will be lined up with the runway. So we can go ahead and now press the localizer button. So now the radio or the ILS tower that's basically at the airport is now guiding my plane to the center line versus the GPS or the flight management computer. But it's still not managing the up and down or basically my glide slope. So once we get a little bit closer here to the airport, we'll see this diamond here for the glide slope turn a solid color and then we'll go ahead and activate the approach. So we're getting close. According to the DME, we're 8.5 nautical miles away. We're doing 130 knots. And there's one other thing I forgot to do, folks. I'm sorry. See how it says approach VREF not selected? What we should have done just before this, and we can still fix it, we'll click clear, select the init ref button, and select our flaps and approach speed. So we'll come in at 30 flaps with 131. So me clicking it made that bigger, and that's all we had to do. So now we're telling the aircraft that's the approach speed we want to have. We look here, we see a diamond that's solid on our glide slope, so it's safe to go over to the Mo control panel and activate the approach. And that's pretty much it for us. We're now going to relax. We still have 2,000 feet to go, and the plane is going to land itself. So if, uh, well, we're gonna do a little bit of work, but practically land itself. So we look here, we're now in single channel mode. We have intercepted the localizer. We're in the dead center line of the runway. We're almost here on the glide slope here. So we're descending, our speeds are good. The auto brake has been set to two. Our flaps are set to 30. We went into the flight management computer, we went to init ref, and we selected 30 degree flaps and 130. Life is good, folks. We are on our way. When we get to about 200 feet, I'm going to disactivate the auto throttle and the autopilot, fly the last little bit myself so that I can have a really smooth landing, and I'll explain what I do once I land. So let's look at some scenery for a few seconds before we start our approach. Approaching a thousand feet. One thousand. Thousand feet stabilized, Mr. Perch altitude set. Thank you for.
first officer. Everything's looking good. Like I said, about 200 feet remaining. I'll disactivate the auto throttle and the autopilot. I'll then bring the throttle down to an idle so that we get a flare and we slowly touch down on the nose of the aircraft, which will then activate the speed brake, which I showed you earlier, and another thing called auto, um, sorry, reverse thrust. And that's where basically we're going to redirect the airflow to be in a reverse direction to slow down the aircraft. So <clears throat> I have levers on my CH Yokes product uh, Eclipse Yoke, so I can simply just pull these levers up and away we go. You might need to bind some key binds in order to do this. 400 feet. Three hundred feet, getting ready to disactivate the auto throttle. Two hundred. All right, we'll deactivate the auto throttle, deactivate the autopilot. We're going to turn that off. There we go. One hundred. One hundred. Fifty. All right, fifty. I'm going to turn the engine down to a um, idle. There we go, speed brake activated, reverse thrust activated. You can see the reverse thrust here. Okay, we'll take the speed brake and auto throttle off. And that's it, so we also have to turn off the auto brake as well. And we'll give it some throttle. So ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching this tutorial. We flew from Philadelphia to KJFK, or New York. We use the Zibomod 737-800 aircraft, which is a free aircraft that you can download from the X-Plane forms. If you're not sure how to install the Zibo aircraft, I have a video that you can watch that explains that. If anything that you've seen today is not right, please note I'm not a pilot, I'm an enthusiast trying to learn. So I would appreciate your comments. If you have any, if you have constructive criticism, I would be more than willing to take it. So again, uh, thanks for watching this tutorial. Uh, this was an ILS approach and runway 04 left. I plan to launch another exact replica of this tutorial, but using an RNAV approach. So we can go ahead and turn off our landing lights so we're not blinding anybody in our taxi lights. You can also turn off our strobe lights now that we're off the runway. And we'll just see if we can connect up here to a gate. And that'll conclude our video. So if you're not if you have not subscribed yet to my channel, please do so. If you have any comments for me, please put those in the comments box below. Um, if there's particular videos that you would like to see me make, I would appreciate those as well, your feedback. Um, I'm also starting to do some live screens, so uh, not screams, live screams would be interesting too, but live streams. So if you would like me to see, <clears throat> if you would like to see flying from one spot to another, feel free to let me know what that is. And I'm going to start trying for some live stream events. So let's just get this thing gated up here and conclude our tutorial for today. All right, that's all for today, folks. Thanks for joining me for another X-Plane 11 tutorial. Please provide me with your comments. It provides me with encouragement to keep making new videos. Thanks for watching.